Hey guys, Melody here with another video. And um, so this video is about a question that I received in terms of all the costs associated with uh, owning a motorcycle. Um, but not only that, but also the steps beforehand is what I also want to include. So again, this is for anyone who is just uh, doing their researching or about to do all these purchases. This is where I really want to help out just to give you a really broad sense uh, but also my experience um, and when I did all the costs and when I paid for everything uh, from the tests to the bike. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the M1 test, of course. So the first cost that uh, I made was in terms of studying and what I had mentioned in one of my other videos was to get the handbook. Uh, I was actually at Walmart earlier today and they actually have the handbook there. And the handbook there is $15.99. So that's one of the first costs if you want to buy it. Um, but again, another tip actually that someone had wrote in one of my comments was that you can go to the library, which is perfect. <laughs> Any way to save costs, guys, especially with such an expensive hobby as owning a motorcycle, definitely, definitely go for it. So again, the first cost is in terms of studying the M1 test is you can either buy the book at Walmart, um, on Amazon as well for $15.99, or you can go to the library to uh, get that motorcycle handbook so you can practice for your M1 test. Second cost. So the second cost is when you actually go into Surface Ontario and you're ready to write the M1 written test. Uh, and that cost is $14.95 plus tax. So again, just be prepared to pay that fee. It's obviously not a big fee, but that's your next cost. And uh, so I'm just reading off a couple notes. So if you see my eyes kind of go in certain directions, <laughs> that's the reason why. Um, and in terms of the Service Ontario in Toronto, just as a little tip, the what, one that I went to, the one that I went to was the one located at College and Young. So that one there, you can write your M1 test. And a little tip there is just to go at off-peak times is always best. So go in the morning. You may need to line up in the morning, but you'll get it done. As, like, the line goes so quick. Um, or you can go at lunch, I've heard. But I think morning is best, to be honest. Just get it done and over with. <laughs> All right. So the next one is the cost of actually going for your um, motorcycle riding course, should you want to. So that's just a route that I took. Uh, I found that with the riding course, because it's my first time riding ever, I wanted to be sure to learn how to ride properly uh, by proper instructions. And also because I was also well, keeping in mind the insurance that I was going to get in the future. And I also wanted to get a discount where I could. Uh, but uh, someone had mentioned to me as well that apparently not all insurance companies will give you a discount if you've done the riding course. So just something to keep in mind as well. I did get a discount for mine, but um, when someone had told me that comment, I was just like, oh, okay, so that, that's definitely good to know. And I just want to share that with you guys as well. So in terms of the M2 writing course, how much did it cost? <laughs> so I went with Motor Soul here in Toronto. I absolutely love them. From beginning to end, the process was so easy to book my weekend course. And the cost overall, and this, to be honest, is last year's price, so it may be a little bit higher, and please do get in touch with them uh, directly to get the exact pricing for this year. But the exact cost that I paid was $563.87, and that was all in. <laughs> so, and again, really, really worth it. This course, um, it's a Thursday night evening course, and then it's uh, all day Saturday and all day Sunday, you're outside riding and enjoying the day. Uh, and if you do have any other questions in terms of motor soul or um, in terms of my experience with this riding school, let me know and I'd be happy to share more details. If not, what I'll also do is put in the description below, I'll give you the link for the uh, website so that you can contact uh, motor soul directly as well. Uh, next thing to note is in terms of your gear. So this one is, I, I like this topic because everyone's going to own their own different style of gear. And I think the, the best thing to do is to figure out what style that you want. Um, but also keep in mind, and what I had in mind at the time was I needed gear for my M2 riding course. So you have to, what to do book it, you have to make sure to have a helmet when you bring it to the M2 riding course. 
And um, so a helmet is what you need. You also need a jacket. You also need the appropriate footwear, uh, which are which can be boots or motorcycle boots. Um, and then in terms of pants, you know, make sure you have jeans or certain riding wear in terms of um, pants that you can get. Uh, in terms of the cost associated with my gear, so I decided to get sort of just the basic necessities, to be honest, because I know how expensive all this stuff can be. And one thing to keep in mind is because I had never ridden before, it's really sort of like when you do your M2 course, it's really a good indication of is this something that I want to do this summer, next summer, for the rest of my life. You, you know, when you get on a bike, it's a bit of a scary feeling, of course, in the beginning. And so I, my recommendation is don't go expensive on your first piece of gear um, because you just don't know how, how your experience will be when you do the course. So in terms of my experience, what I did was I got the helmet. Oh, another thing is you need gloves. So I got the helmet. Um, I got gloves and then in terms of everything else, I already owned a leather jacket. So leather jacket is your best, is one of your best bets in order to um, keep yourself safe because leather being such a good, like, great material. So I owned a leather jacket, so I cut the cost of getting a jacket. You know, I had jeans, of course, so I cut the cost of having to pay for certain riding gear in terms of pants uh, because again, this is something I wanted just for the course. Uh, and ten, in terms of footwear, I had boots already, so I cut the cost of actually getting the specific riding style um, motorcycle boots. So my cost overall, uh, in order to do the M2 riding course, and actually I still use this gear to this day and I'm so happy with it. Uh, I will be upgrading my gear soon because I want to be able to experience other pieces and uh, own different jackets and uh, experience different like pieces of, of gear. So in terms of what I paid for for the key pieces being my helmet and also my gloves, um, where I went to buy these two items were, um, it's a store called Town Moto here in Toronto and that's located on Ossington Street. Um, so 132 Ossington Street, I believe it's close to Queen, I think around that intersection. So if you're from, if you're, if you're watching this and you're located in Toronto, that's a really good place to go. Uh, they have a bunch of other stuff as well, so go check it out. And they were super sweet, you know, again, I told them it was my first time. They helped me get the right sizing of a helmet. Um, and gloves, they gave me some recommendations on um, the best type, um, again, the size. And my cost associated for the helmet and the gloves together came up to $472, 0.34 all in. <laughs> so expect to pay about $200 minimum for your helmet um, and about, sorry, maybe 200 to 300 minimum for your helmet and then about 100 to 150 or $200 for the gloves. And of course you want great gloves because that's gonna protect your hands should you ever fall. So those, yeah, very key items and you'll need that for the M2 writing course. And um, yeah, <laughs> and then obviously to your preference in terms of the style, but also get recommendations from the people who work at the store. Next cost. So uh, after I did my M1, after I did my M2, I got my gear, uh, what I did this year, like you know if you have seen my other videos, is I decided to buy my bike this year, yay! <laughs> I was so 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 happy and um, so what I'll share with you also in this video is how much did my bike cost and what were all these miscellaneous charges that are involved in buying a bike um, and other other costs that I am also paying at the moment. So. I will start with my amazing 2019 Yamaha R3 and how much it cost. So the cost of my bike before tax is $5,999. So just about $6,000 for my bike. Um, I didn't finance it. I'm not paying monthly for it. I went all in because I know how passionate I am about uh, riding a motorcycle. And I also, in terms of finances, I just prefer doing this style of purchase. But again, I'll leave that up to you if you prefer to finance uh, or lease, but um, that's what I did in the end and that's the cost uh, on my bike. And so <laughs> when I was reviewing my bill of sale, which is 
basically another term of the receipt. So it outlines all the charges that are associated. If you if you ever if you've ever bought and bought um, a car or a bike, you know of a bill of sale or perhaps any other sort of transportation. I believe they still use that terminolo terminology. Um, so what you'll see on the bill of sale for a bike specifically, and what I had here in Toronto and Ontario. Um, so other miscellaneous charges, one thing in particular was the PDI, which is your pre-delivery inspection, and that cost, you know, on the bill of sale, and that cost is $205 plus tax. Please, please note these costs that I will tell you, it could be different with other dealerships, could be different with other style of bikes in terms of years. So don't take this to heart, but this is what I paid. The next, um, or sorry, and just to let you know, the pre-delivery inspection, it's the price of performing a maintenance check on the vehicle when it first arrives at the dealership. So again, just kind of knowing these terminologies, I think is also key in your researching. And I also like to know like what I'm buying and what these charges are. Next one that also came on the bill of sale was a freight charge. Um, and this was $295 plus tax, and that's them um, shipping the bike to the store, so that's also like associated in the bill of sale. Next one is your admin fee, uh, so $99 plus tax again, and this one is the money that the dealership spends on um, processing and documentation. And actually just something to note, what I'm also kind of realizing is it may be different if you buy a bike from somebody um, directly. And again, this is because I went with a dealership, uh, these costs were involved. Uh, next one is an enviro fee. Um, so just in terms of, this is really just a general, exactly how it sounds is for an environment. Uh, Government of Ontario included these fees for all, um, uh, for bikes and any sort of transportation uh, vehicles. <clears throat> the next one is the OMVIC. Um, and this one is $10 plus tax. And this is a fee for the retail sale of a dealership. Now apparently, one thing, I didn't realize at the time to be honest, but one thing I found out was apparently you can cut this fee. Um, and it's like, I think what the dealership does is they pass on this fee to the customer because it's the fee for every retail sale that the dealership makes. So when you do buy it, let me know if you can actually cut this fee when you buy it with a dealership. I'm actually kind of curious about that. So that one, so yeah, OMVIC is what it's called, and that's $10 plus tax. And, ba, 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 ba. and then the next one, uh, or the next couple items, so just, that will wrap up all the bill of sale items. And just to kind of give you a summary again of what that all was. So on the bill of sale, my bike, which is $5,999, sorry, $5,999. Uh, the PDI, the pre-delivery inspection, being $205. The freight um, price, which is $295. Your admin fee of $99. Your enviro fee of $9.25. And then the OMVIC, which is $10 plus tax. So, <laughs> it's definitely a fun day of uh, shopping, that's for sure. So, the next cost that um, came up, and these are now costs that I paid to the dealership and almost like add-ons, if you if you may. What I added on was I wanted to get a cover for my bike. Um, I do keep it in underground parking, and so it's just in terms of pro to protect it from like dust, and also in the winter, I just want to keep it safe, uh, and just in general, um, keep my baby warm. <laughs> so a cover for a bike, what I paid, and again, your cost will probably diff be different if you find one new or used. I, the cover for my bike is 60 to Sorry, $60 plus tax. Next one, so because I went with a dealership, um, or the reason why I went with a dealership was because in case I needed any sort of adjustments on the bike, I think it would have been just a great point of contact and I believe they were more capable to help me than if I had bought it from someone else directly. And in my specific case, that's what happened. So my... Yamaha R3. Um, I'm very short. I'm 5'2". So um, actually just a little tip if there is anyone who is around the 5'2 range, what happened in my case was it was the bike is, is too high for me. Like I was on my tippy toes when I tried it out. So for me it's of course more comfortable and I believe for anybody is more comfortable if you're a flat foot when you're actually like 
um, standing still on it. And uh, so what had what I had done was um, I asked them to lower it, and the cost associated with that is they'll have to get a lowering kit, or at least that's what they told me in my case. So again, let me know if you had a different experience. So them purchasing a lowering kit, which they said they had to order from Texas, and then it would arrive within a couple of days, and then it would be prepared within a week, that cost was $300 uh, before tax. So again, uh, for me to lower my bike, so it's at an appropriate height um, for me to ride it comfortably, they bought a, their, I purchased a lowering kit for $300, and then they were able to lower the bike for me. So it's and I actually love it. I think it's way more comfortable and, and safer for me. So it was good. It's definitely a well worth uh, cost to make if you are short as well. Uh, next one. So you can go with CAA here in Ontario. Um, I'm sure there's a couple other companies you can go with in terms of roadside assistance. But the dealership has one um, with MTS Roadside. Uh, so that's who I'm with right now. and. What that means is in case anything happens to my bike, like for whatever, you know, in case I get into a crash, in case I get into an accident, in case I need um, towing assistance, then I purchased a one year membership with MTS roadside assistance and that cost, uh, that cost me $79 plus tax. So again, $79 gets me this um, um, anytime towing assistance, uh, roadside assistance, and that's for a whole year. So I added that on because of course, like for me, I think that's something so key. I have their number stored on my phone in case I should ever need them. And um, I think it's actually super great the fact that it's for North America. So it's for Canada and US anywhere, like anytime. So that makes me feel really safe. So that's another thing that I bought. All right, um, so uh, once I did wait that week for them to lower my bike, I then went into the dealership and I was, and so that I was able to pick it up and able to test it and able to ride it. One of the best days of my life. And when I did pick it up, um, so because I bought the bike brand new and because I bought it at the dealership, what they were actually able to do was to do uh, my licensing and registration directly there, which is another tip I'm going to include here is if you buy it used, you will have to do your own licensing and registration at a service Ontario. Um, I don't know what the costs are associated with that um, because I didn't go that route, but the costs that were associated uh, with, with the dealership was that for my license and registration, it costs $80 on the spot. So one-time fee, uh, and now I'm all set up with my plate. They, so they put my license plate on it, and I have my um, registration, of course. So I, I like that, and I think I would recommend to anyone getting their first bike to go that same route of get a new bike and get it with a dealership so that there is that paper, or so, yeah, so there's those records on file, so you have that assistance, um, and so they can also assist you with those other items like your registration and your license plate uh, and licensing. So I really like that, and, um, and then, but also keep in mind that that was also another fee. <laughs> so next fees. Uh, so the next two fees I'm going to talk about now are just owning a bike now. So I have my gear, I have my licensing, I have my, you know, I have my up to my M2. So the other fees that I pay now is my insurance per month, and I also pay for parking. So the great thing about Toronto is that there is free parking here. You just have to obey the street signs in certain locations. Um, but uh, in terms of where I am, I do have underground parking because I want to protect my bike as possible. And it's also because I've heard that a lot of people still bikes in Toronto. I don't know whether that's true, but it's just a room I heard. And I like to keep my baby safe. So I decided to go the route of underground parking to keep it safe. And, uh, and also as a little tidbit, there's also a camera in the underground parking right where my bike is. So <laughs> I love the fact that it's so safe. So the two costs uh, of insurance and, and uh, parking. So insurance, uh, what I pay per month is $173 per month. I went with Dalton Timmons here in Ontario. Please feel free to comment what you're paying per month. 
I did not do enough research, I think, um, but let me know what you're paying. Let me know if you have a better deal, if I should switch, uh, but that's what I am paying per month. And again, this is my first time owning a bike and I do have this um, fee that I pay for a year. So $173 per month and I'm with them for a year. So I am very curious if you are paying more or less. And one thing to keep in mind as well with insurance um, your insurance will be lower if you're over 25. Your insurance will be lower if you've done the M2 riding course. Again, in, for certain insurance companies. And your insurance will be different if you're a guy or a girl, which is very sexist. But I'm just going to put that out there and let you know. And um, yeah, so please feel free to comment on what you're paying and if you have any advice for, that I can share to anyone else as well. Now, the, so the last cost that I'm going to talk about is uh, my parking spot. <laughs> and uh, so what I'm paying right now is $100 per month for my parking spot for my bike. And I did actually, I was, was able to negotiate with my building because the, um, the parking spot that I have is smaller. So mention that to your building or if you are looking for a particular parking spot, be like, hey, I don't need a big parking spot for a regular uh, car. Just give me the smallest thing that you have and maybe you can cut costs that way too, because I was able to do that. So, And they were sweet enough actually to, to, to do that for me. So uh, yeah, so uh, I hope this video helped. Uh, again, I know what it's like to really put in the research and try to figure out all these costs associated with anything that you're passionate about. Um, one my other major travels is, or one of my other major passions is traveling, which is also expensive, so these two items that I have, you know, traveling and a motorcycle are very expensive, but well worth it, like 100%. And I think you know that because if you're also in the same stages, then I don't have to tell you that, you, I, or ask you if it's worth it, you know. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I apologize if it's a bit long, but I did want to be as um, resourceful as possible and I want to help you guys out in any way that I can. Uh, again, because I love talking about owning a motorcycle and the steps that you need to take. And so, yes, if you have any comments, if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to help out. I will be doing another video. Um, one video what really, really am working on right now is to do a review of my bike. So that will be released soon, hopefully by the end of the month, I am hoping. <laughs> so guys, again, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, please hit that like button if you did enjoy watching. And please do hit that subscribe button because I have a goal to have 1,000 subscribers, which I hope I can hit um, and just help you guys learn and help you guys uh, have a great experience in riding a motorcycle like I am right now. Thanks, guys, and have a great day. And if you're a Raptors fan, we did it! It was such fun times in the city on Thursday. So just had to give that little blurb. <laughs> All right, bye. Bye, guys.